Hello friends, welcome to this extended blog on Python RPA automation series. As you know, in my previous video, I have been using ChatGPT and BART coding skills for Python automations. Today, I have some very exciting news to share. Today, July 18, Meta, previously known as Facebook, released their state-of-the-art largest language model. LLMA2 is Meta's latest machine learning model trained with 70 billion hyperparameters and best of all is absolutely free for research and commercial use. LLMA2 outperforms all of the Meta's previous large language models and again just to emphasize that best part is is completely free for individuals, creator, researcher and business of all sizes. So in my previous video as I used as I tested those chat GPT and uh, uh, BART models for this text completion and chat completion feature. Today I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to put Meta's LLMA2 to, to the test. In today's blog, I'm going to show you how you can quickly set it up in your environment and evaluate LLMA2 performance by yourself. So first head out to their GitHub repository. And again, I'm going to include the link to the GitHub repository in the video description below. Now, before I clone this repository to my environment, I want to take a minute and familiarize myself with all the files over there. So first of all, you should start with reading the content of the readme.md file here. And as you can see, uh, first step is in order to download the model weights and tokenizer, you have to sign up. So go to their Meta AI website and here is a very simple form. Once you fill out the details on this form, like first name, last name, email, very quickly, actually I got that within a minute, you will receive an email from Meta. Now that email will include a URL. So make sure that you get an email like this. So again, it may change in near future, but for now, so this is the email I received and all you need to do, you need to copy and you know, uh, the content of this particular URL and you will need that later. This URL lets you download uh, the model and the model weights. All right, so next step is, what do you want to go? You want to make sure that you have a machine which is compatible to run this kind of um, LLAM2 models. So to do that, um, first of all, uh, you have to download certain guidelines. So let's go head out to this one. And first of all, before you even start, I want to tell you these things, you need a GPU machine. If you if you are working on, if you, your machine don't have GPUs, there are still ways around it. In future, I'll show you, you, you know, you have to customize this code. But for now, I'm just going with the assumption that you are creating a virtual machine. Uh, if you don't have that, please go to the Google Cloud and your preferred cloud environment and create a machine which should have a GPU. So here, as you can see, I'm selecting, I'm creating a new virtual machine, Linux virtual machine. It has um, say one or two GPUs, right? You can, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make a, you know, make it work on Windows or non-GPU machines, but right now, you know, uh, you have to wait for that. Right now it's not possible. Okay, so once you have this machine ready, I'm going to, you know, log into that machine. So let me increase the size of this thing. And I'm going to, you know, uh, say, install a Ubuntu image. So any kind of Linux machine, you, you know, Debian, Ubuntu, or CentOS, any Linux machine, as long as you have a Linux machine, good memory, and you have a, um, uh, and you have GPU, you should be okay to download this and make it work. All right, so now it's going to take a few minutes. I'm going to, you know, once this machine is ready, I'm going to log into that machine. All right, so let's go back to um, the readme page to this one. And here I'm going to copy the URL of that GitHub repository. Next thing you want to do, get clone. So here I'm logged into my Ubuntu machine here. Again, if you don't have the, you know, just simple command, git clone and give the part to this GitHub repository, it will download that. If you don't have the git, make sure that you, uh, you download the git. So sudo opt install git all, it will install the git on your machine. I already have that, so I'm not going to do that over again. Okay, so git clone and give the part to this one. It's going to take very, very few minutes because it's a very light weighted directory here. And let me, you know, browse to this. So again, as you can see, it created a directory called LLAM. And inside that LLAM, please make sure that it should match the content of what you're seeing on their website. So as you can see, it's a very, very, you know, very small repository here, but make sure that you have a couple of files here like download.sh file. I'm going to, you know, execute that, but because the, what this download.shell file does, it's going to start downloading the content of that. Again, um, it's not it's not executable, so let me change the permission on this. So ch mode 777, I make it in, make it an executable, fi executable file. So now let's try to execute this shell script again. Now it's asking for the URL. So if you recall, 
in your email you receive that particular URL. This URL is uh, an exchange. Actually, you know, it is going to um, expire after 24 hours. So what it's going to do is going to download the model and the model weight. So it's going to again, second step is going to ask like if you want to, uh, if you're interested in particular one or two model, if you hit enter, like leave it all the choices blank, it's going to download all the models available out there. All right, so as you can see, it is done. Let me do the LSIR again. So you will immediately see it downloaded a couple of the models, say tokenizer.model, and it downloaded a couple of other files as well. So please take a minute uh, to see what has been already downloaded. Let me open that in VS Code so that you can see it better. So as you can see, it downloaded um, the 1 billion file, uh, 70 billion and 13 billion. It depends on the different type of models out there. Um, so it downloaded all those content here. Again, it will give you later when you execute that code, the reason is downloaded different version. It will let you choose what particular model you, you want to, you know, run your, um, uh, run your code against. Next thing you want to do, very simple. So please make a note of these things. Uh, what are the different parameters are available? What are the different models are available? And once you have that, simply all you need to do, go to the root directory where you have downloaded this one, simply pip install hyphen e dot. What is it going to do? Uh, whatever the Python version is included, the Python packages are included in the requirements.txt file is going to, you know, it is going to create a virtual environment inside this particular directory. So pip install hyphen e dot. All right, and then next step is you just need to familiarize yourself what are the different models available. Again, in near future, I'm expecting Meta to release more models, but right now, for example, there are three different models here. And then next step is what kind of, um, you know, so for next you have to create a couple of Python files here. Let me go and open those things file in ULVS code so that you can see it better. It's very, very simple. Simply like in chat GPT or BART, what do you do? You, you know, are you are accessing OpenAI chat GPT through prompt is very, very similar code. I think it's, you know, once you know that code and I will include a link to that, you know, uh, video again, it's a self-explanatory code is very simple. All it does, there is a main function out there. And if you call this Python script as a script, as a command line prompt is going to execute that main function. And inside that main function, as you can see, it accepts couple of parameters here. I'll come back to this parameter, what those parameters are. But for now, those are simple tuning, the parameters, what kind of, uh, you know, uh, what kind of parameters you are using. Okay, I'll come back to that later. And simple, next thing is what it does, it calls a build method on that LLMA model. And uh, you know, you, you create a generator out, out of there and out of the generator interface, you call a function called chat completion. And inside that chat completion, all you are doing going to do simply you are passing different, uh, the parameters like dialogues or the, or the uh, what kind of model you want to use, simple things like that, okay? So again, just to recap, there is a main function out there. It takes the runtime parameters and then it builds a generator interface. And once you have the generator, which calls the actually build function here, and in the generator, you call a function called chat completion, and you pass your prompts, you pass the tokens, those kind of values out there, and then you simply print it. Now inside that dialogue, as you can see, there are, it, it's accepting a couple of list values here. Uh, one difference I saw between uh, chat GPT and LLMA2, that here you can pass more than one uh, dialogues, that more, more than one packages. So simply in one package, but the, again, the similarity is, is asking you the role and the content. It is very similar to the chat GPT interface. There are two things like the, the, what kind of persona, role means kind of persona and content, what you are asking it to do. So eventually what I'm trying to do here, whatever I did it for OpenAI, uh, all of these things, chat completion, I'm going to copy paste these things and I'm going to pass this through. Basically what I'm trying to do, I will, I'm, my purpose is I want to test it, uh, LLMA, for the similar content, what I tested it against chat GPT and BARD. And uh, once those are ready, I'm going to include those, few, you know, all of the output um, in um, in the video description below. But in my experience, those are similar, not, uh, actually you can say a little bit better, but those are definitely at par with chat GPT. Again, this is something you have to decide how, you know, uh, please come up with your own prompts and test uh, both the systems here. But in my opinion, they are very, very same. And as, as a matter of fact, I'm a little bit more biased toward this, this thing because it's, it's, it's free of course and um, and I'm hoping that it will get even eventually better all right again just to recap that so this is the, how you set it up and to access this particular um, access the LLMA model is 
through this command. So ultimately what you do once you have your Python environment, all you're doing, you're executing a command called torch, torch run and you're passing all of these parameters here. For example, what kind of model you want to use and what is the content? Uh, that means your dialogue, what you are, or the prompts, okay? So simply as you can see, here you can see I'm saying, I'm this is particular model I want to access. This is where are my content are, that means all my messages are, uh, are my prompts are. And next thing is, what is the, you know, tokenizer, how I want to use. A good thing is here you can tune this, is giving you an option that you can, you know, depending on your machine configuration, you can, you know, choose different batch size or sequence length. So that's the difference. Open AI actually, it's, uh, it's sitting somewhere here, but the biggest difference here is, is sitting directly on my machine. So here I can, you know, I can just directly use this inside my application. So that's why I'm so excited about using LLMA, the chat GPT. Here it's um, giving me flexibility to download those models within my app and I'm free to use it inside my app. So I hope you find this you know, video a little useful. Uh, and in future, I'll be making more videos as I learn more about this technology. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to open an issue at my issue lock and I'll be happy to help you out. Thank you very much. I appreciate you watching this.